In this video we're going to look at writing formulae for compounds. We're going to start with two element compounds which end in IDE and we'll work our way through to the three element compounds ending in 8 or IGHT. So when we're using this method to write our formulae you're going to have a look in the data book to find the symbols of your two elements. So for our first example we have potassium oxide. So potassium is a K and we're going to put a circle around it. You're going to have a look and see what group is potassium in and you'll find it's in group 1. So you're going to draw one arm onto your potassium. You're then going to have a look and find oxygen. And again, you're going to put a circle around it. Now if you find oxygen, you'll find it's in group 6. This means that it's got space for two more electrons, therefore it has two arms. Now the only thing that you can fill up the spare arm on the oxygen with is another potassium. So you're going to draw another potassium in and join up the arms. Your next step is to simply count what you have and put in the subscript numbers. So we've got two Ks and one O. So our formula will be K2O. If we look at our next example, again we're looking at potassium. We know potassium is K and we know it's in group 1. If we look for chlorine, chlorine is in group 7. It's got a symbol of Cl and it needs one electron to fill up its outer shell. That means chlorine can form one bond. You've filled up all the bonds that there are there, so you count what you have and you write it down. So we have KCl. If we move on now to look at magnesium fluoride. Magnesium is in group 2, it has two outer electrons to lose, so it has the ability to form two bonds. Fluorine is in group 7, it's the same column as chlorine, so reacting in a similar way to chlorine can form one bond. Just like the first example, the only thing that we can fill up the spare bond with is the opposite element in our compound, so we're going to put in a second fluorine and we're going to count what we have. So we've got Mg F2. Next example is slightly more tricky to draw out. So you have aluminium, which is in group 3. So it has three available bonds. Oxygen is in group 6, as we saw above, and has two arms. So both arms can join to that one aluminium. However, we've got this spare aluminium arm, and the only thing we can join on is an oxygen. So you draw your oxygen in, and now oxygen has a spare arm. So you hop to the other side, put in an aluminium, and now aluminium has two arms. So you can put in a final oxygen to fill up all of those arms. So counting up what we have, we have Al2O3. This next example, you'll see the name looks slightly different. We have iron, and then in brackets we have the Roman num numeral for two, and then oxide. This is because iron is a transition metal, and you can't work out its valency by which group it's in, as it can change. So we give you the valency in brackets as a Roman numeral after the name. So this two is the valency for the iron. So if you find, on the periodic table, find the symbol for iron, is Fe. Using the Roman numeral you can put in how many bonds it can form, so two, and oxygen, we've already seen before, also forms two bonds. So counting up what we have, we've got FeO. This next example also looks at iron, so this is the other transition state of iron, and it's iron 3 oxide. So the 3 is the valency of iron within this compound, so we write down Fe, we have the three bonds, and this compound in structure is just quite like the aluminium oxide that we had up above. So we just need to keep putting in oxygen and Fe until we have no more lines spare. Count up what you have, we should have Fe2, O3. And then we're ready to move on to 
three element compounds. Now calcium hydroxide is an example of an, a three element compound which actually ends in IDE. And that is because hydroxide contains oxygen and hydrogen, so this is an exception to our rule. You can find the symbol for hydroxide in the group ion table in your data book, and it's in the column one minus for the charge. That means that it's got a valency of one, so when you draw it, it only has the one R. So calcium is in group two. So we've got two available bonds. OH is one thing together. So it's only got the one arm and you'll need to draw in two of them to fill up both of calcium's arm. Counting up what we have, we have calcium and we've got two OHs. To show that we've got two OHs, we need to put it into brackets and we put the two outside the brackets to show that it's two of this whole part here that we have.